Hi everyone, my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And welcome to day number 10 of our 12 days of board games, where we are showcasing a game a day. Today we have Funkoverse. This is a strategy game. It's a mm -hmm. competitive strategy game where uh, you basically are different characters from different IPs. Today we have Harry Potter, uh, <laughs> and we are going to be showcasing it. It's designed by Prospero Hall, and of course, released by Funko Games. Yes, and so what Naveen was referring to is this is a game about those little Funko Pop you know, miniatures that mm -hmm. you kind of see floating around in stores and stuff. This is an example of one. They made an entire game series <laughs> off of these things. Yeah. And so this is a bigger series. It's part of a bigger series. There's a lot of different uh, themes for this game, but today we are focusing on the Harry Potter IP. And it's kind of a lot to this game. So today we're just gonna kind of do a brief overview and show you around the game and so you can know what to expect. Yep. So let's get started. All right, so we are all set up here with the side of the board that features Diagon Alley. If you're familiar with the Harry Potter uh, series, the opposite side of the board is actually a totally different scene. It's the room of requirement. And so this game features multiple game modes. Mm -hmm. And at its core, this game is a tactical strategy game where you're basically going team versus team and you're trying to accomplish some kind of a mission. So when we say there are different modes of play, we mean different modes of play. Like you can you can earn points, so you can knock each other out. So it really just depends on what style of game you're going for. Meaning the objective to complete mm -hmm. the game is different. Is different, yeah. that's right. So this is the base game of the Harry Potter version of Funkoverse. And so what the game comes with, it comes with four of these Funko Pop miniatures, as well as kind of like basic characters which are these like circular chits and so each team is supposed to have three characters mm -hmm. you can mix and match these uh we kind of set it up so that i have Voldemort, Voldemort yeah. and uh, i believe this is Bellatrix. i don't think you're supposed to say his name oh sorry yeah. <laughs> and i have of course harry of harry potter <laughs> and we have hermione granger that's right and she's holding something we'll talk about it yes and even though these are kind of like the two teams that make sense it doesn't have to be this way you can start the game by Mix selecting your team yeah kind of like uh you know when you're playing dodgeball or something and you have a team <laughs> captain uh-huh you can kind of do that you could do that yeah mm -hmm. and so the way that the game works in general is once you've chosen your characters you're going to take the character cards that that pertain to your specific characters and at the bottom right hand corner of each character card, you'll find two different colored dots. And those are the tokens that you need to take into your supply. Bellatrix and Lord Voldemort together requires two gray tokens, a blue and a yellow. So that's why I have these over here. Mm -hmm. And so these tokens are going to allow me to use their special abilities because uh, as you'll see, their special abilities are linked to one of those colored tokens. Exactly, yep. And so the basic structure of the game is each player is going to be taking turns, taking actions with each of their characters. Each character gets two actions each. And so if I were my turn, I would choose a character, do my two actions, and then it would go to Naveen. Mm -hmm. He would choose a character, do his two actions, etc. until all characters have been exhausted. Yep. And so there are four basic actions that all of the characters can take, and I'm just going to kind of briefly go over each one of them. Mm -hmm. The first thing that you can do is you can move your character up to two squares in any direction. And that actually includes diagonally. Um, the only thing is you cannot move past characters and you cannot move past obstacles. Yep. So those are just things to keep in mind, but it's pretty rare that you can actually move diagonally in a game, mm -hmm. and that's legal here. The next thing you can do is you can do what's called a basic challenge, and this action is going to allow you to try to knock out an opponent. Yep. So we're going to try to do that right now. Sure. <laughs> so say I have Bellatrix over here. Yeah, Oops, right. excuse me. Sorry, Voldemort. So say I have Be Bellatrix right here, and I am right there, and let's say Harry's right there. I can spend one action to perform a basic challenge against Harry. So what that would allow me to do is it would allow me to roll two of these dice. And the dice have different faces. There's kind of like a, a kapow symbol. Mm -hmm. There's a shield symbol and they're exclamation marks. And so I would roll my two dice. So for every kapow symbol, which I did not roll, I would get one success. And for every exclamation mark, I would get three successes. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I rolled that. And so I only got three successes. And now Naveen would roll. Two kapows. <laughs> you got two kapows. And so as a defender, you want to roll the shields. It's going to be the opposite. Mm -hmm. If he rolls a shield, it's one success, and the exclamation mark is still three successes. Right. So because he rolled two kapow symbols, he scored zero mm -hmm. to my three. Yep. So I was successful. And because I did a challenge while his character was standing up, what it does is it lays him down. Knocks me out. And it kind of knocks him down. Mm -hmm. And so if I were to do another challenge while he's laying down, then it would knock him out, and he would leave the board I would win that intro scenario. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Knocks you down, then knocks you out. Yes. Exactly, yes. In the standard game, though, 
uh, knocking somebody out doesn't necessarily end the game. And so what happens is if it's a knocked out character, they automatically go to the one spot on the cooldown track. Mm -hmm. And so every round, all of the things on your cooldown track are gonna move down a space. So this character is just out for this round. He'll have access to Harry next round. Yep, exactly. So because they only knocked Harry down, he actually just stays there on that spot. And so what Naveen can do on his turn is the next action, which allows him to assist. So what I can do on my turn is if Hermione was right here adjacent to Harry, who's knocked down, I can do the assist action, which would then pick up Harry. It's basically like lending a hand yes. and picking him back up. Mm -hmm. And I have to knock him down all over again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and now the fourth basic action is actually an action called interact. There are going to be certain objects in some of the scenarios that allow you to interact with them that require you actually to interact with them in order to score points or mm -hmm. this and that. And so that is what that last action lets you do. And so the neat thing about this game is in addition to those basic actions, there are special actions. And they typically come in the form of these special abilities that are listed on the specific character cards. Yeah, they're unique to the characters. Yes, I do want to note though that these generic type of characters, so like in the case of the the uh, the baddies, I have a Death Eater. <laughs> yeah, and I have Aura. Yes, yeah, Naveen has an Aura. aura. Yep. These do not come with special yep. actions. These are only basic action type characters. But each character card tells you exactly what special types of abilities that specific character can do, what type of token you have to spend, and where that token is gonna go on the cooldown track once you use that ability. Mm -hmm. So specifically for, for Miss Bellatrix over here, she has uh, three different abilities. One is Confundo that allows Bellatrix to do that challenge action, which lets you roll the dice up to a distance of four. From a distance, yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty neat. You don't have to be like right next to Harry to do this. And so it's gonna cost the gray token and once she uses that ability, this gray token is gonna go on the number three spot of her cooldown track. This specific gray token is not gonna be available for another three rounds. Exactly. That's basically what that means because after this round, it's gonna go down to the two. After that round, it's gonna go down to the one, down to the one et cetera. Yeah. It doesn't mean that she can't use that ability because I have another gray token right yeah. here. Mm -hmm. It just means that specifically that gray token is not gonna be available for three rounds. Right. So if you did it again on a second turn, mm -hmm. then both your gray tokens would be arrested. Right, yeah. which also means that the special abilities that are specific to Lord Voldemort that require that gray token are going to be not available. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a little bit of this um, economy with your power tokens that you're trying to manage and you're trying to divvy out, uh, you know, amongst your characters. Yeah, you want to allocate it. And now these tokens that were assigned to us based off of our character, they're not specific to just one character. They're for your pool of characters. Mm -hmm. So. I have yellow for both Harry and for Hermione. So these yellows can go either way. Right. Yep. And so that's significant because if you're mixing the, the different types of expansions that this game can have, you may want to choose characters based off of the common uh, color tokens the that synergy. they share. Yeah. And now each character has three of these different special abilities. So we're not going to go over each one. Just know that that is how those uh, abilities work. And that's kind of part of the heart of the game. Yeah. And so the last type of special action has to do with the items that the game comes with. And so I don't know if you can see it that well, but uh, Voldemort over here is holding this dagger. Removable it's actually, dagger. it's a removable dagger. Mm -hmm. It's a really tiny item. So mm -hmm. be warned that this game does come with really tiny pieces and any, any character really can hold it. So I'm gonna put it back in his hand. And so each item has its own item card that tells you what the item does for that character. Mm -hmm. So specifically the dagger lets you do a challenge of two, which is just a st the standard challenge but that character may then do an extra non-challenge action. So it's kind of like a two-in-one. And at the top right-hand corner of the card, it tells you where this card actually is gonna go on the cooldown track once you use the item. So those also have kind of like a, a waiting period before mm -hmm. you can use them again. Items are not shared. So because we attached this, this dagger to Voldemort, Voldemort's gonna have the dagger for the entire game. Yes. And so the last thing that you may notice on these character cards is the very bottom here. Each character has a trait. And that is just kind of something specific to that character. So for Bellatrix, her trait is a notorious witch. Whenever she shifts off the cooldown track, you can place her adjacent to an ally. And an ally is one of your own characters. Mm -hmm. The left hand here, which we didn't explain earlier, is the defense number. And so when I was challenging Naveen earlier, yep. that's actually the number of dice that the person who's defending gets to roll. Yeah, so that's why I rolled two as Harry, because I had two shield signs right here. And so that is the general gist, the general skeleton of how all the Funkoverse games are played. Like we were mentioning in the beginning, this game does come with four different modes of play. There's a capture the flag mode, which is 
basically exactly what it sounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a control mode where you're going around to different uh, specific parts of the map, putting out control tokens and trying to score points by maintaining them from yeah. round to round. There's a, there's a very aggressive mode where you're trying to just knock, knock each, each other, other out and yeah. gaining points that way. Mm -hmm. And there's an area control mode where you're trying to get your specific characters to one part of the map and stay there so that you can earn points. Yeah, maintain the hill. And also we were briefly mentioning how you can mix and match the characters from the same IP but you can also technically mix and match different worlds. Yes. It doesn't specifically say that in the rule book, but we've been told that you can do that and yes. it works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's uh, the ones that we're familiar with is there's a Golden Girls one. Uh -huh. There's a Jurassic Park one. Uh, I yes. believe Batman as well. There's a Kool-Aid one. Kool-Aid Kool one. Man. Yeah, there's a bunch of different ones. Yes. Very, very interesting. So stuff. it really just depends on which uh, theme you enjoy. So that is Funkoverse by Funko Games, designed by Prospero Hall. Well, thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. This is day 10 of our 12 days of board games, so we're coming towards the end here. Tune in tomorrow for day 11, which is going to be a little bit different. A little different. That's a little hint. Mm -hmm. There might be several games featured in that video. Yes. So stay tuned. Thanks. Thank you, bye. bye.